Well, hello. I reviewed the little Walkira Rodeo 110 just a little while ago, and I found it to be, you know, okay as a beginner package. It had this radio as well, but I felt we could get more out of it. So I wanted to come back today, I've got a bit of time, and see what we could do about getting better firmware on here um, and seeing if it flies better. So let's jump in. So one of my complaints last time was about the floppiness of these sticks. Um, they, they always feel okay when I use them like this and then when I'm out in the field I'm like, oh these are really loose. So there was a pretty easy way in, just six screws in the back. The back just folds down and you can get access here to the tension screw. You can only tension the throttle one, but that seems to be the important one for me that makes a lot of difference. This is just going to feel as it feels. My only way of sorting this out was literally to put my thumb on the Tyrannus and then the thumb on this one and get them where they're both about the same and I feel more comfortable. This is a very personal and subjective thing about how much you want that. Loads of people want absolutely no tension in there at all. I seem to want quite a lot, but that's just me. Next thing to do was to get beta flight on this thing itself. Not a problem, it's got a little USB connector here. Now the beta flight flashing was pretty straightforward. I found um, some guys have already done this, so I had a quick look at some of their recommended settings here, and it, it's from a, a German site called walkirafans.de. I'll, I'll pop the link up here. And um, they talked about doing it with a manual board rate and using the SP uh, Racing F3 target. That all made sense, but they also had some useful things in there. The fact you could use one shot one two five for the SCs, that you'd have to orientate the um, your 180 degrees because the flight control is obviously in there backwards. And they recommended a gyro update and uh, PID loop frequency of 2.67 kilohertz, which I probably wouldn't have got. Well, having made those changes, when I went to the receiver tab, I noticed something a bit weird here, which is that the end points of the radio were way out, like 1099 to 1900. That's like 200 points of resolution missing. I set the sub trim up, that's okay, so the midpoint's 1500. So what I found is a command called RX range that really helps us here. All you do is you type RX range, and this is what I got set up immediately, and I've already sorted out one of the channels. And then you type in your lowest value and your highest value for the particular channel you're talking about. And I'm doing it here for uh, pitch and your, because they were both the same. Uh, once you do that, obviously you type save as you would with any CLI command. And if you now go back into the receiver tab, when you do the full stick range, you'll notice it goes from 1000 to 2000 with 1500 as the midpoint, which is spot on. The next thing I had to do is try and work out how to use this radio and the switches. Now, when I turned to the receiver, I thought, well, perhaps some of these switches might do something already. So what I did is I literally went onto this page and I tried doing some switches and I saw, oh, I got an aux 2 there and this does nothing and that does something, that does nothing, that does something. So with three auxiliary switches, I found it pretty easy to set my modes up. If we look here, I used arm on aux 3, um, I had angle set up on aux 2, the beeper on aux 1 and Essentially, I've, I've always got it in acro mode, and then if I move um, to the second position, that gives me acro plus air, and then that's angle. So, yeah, that worked okay. So as far as pitch tuning went, I just decided to leave it all as default. The only thing I changed was my Super 8 to 0.8, which is my sort of normal flying thing. All you need to do is flash it, set these few bits up here. I, I forgot to mention it's on PPM, that receiver, so... Uh, don't forget that one. There is actually an S bus in port here, but it's kind of like that's messing around with putting um, external receivers and stuff. That would be a bit weird. But yeah, it doesn't seem much to it. Um, obviously, I recalibrated the ESCs in the um, motors tab, and that looked okay, and made sure everything would turn on, air mode would work, it would arm and stuff. So yeah, that was fine. Next thing to do is obviously fly this and see how it goes. And off we go into the field. This is the first flight and I'm using the default 850 milliamp hour battery, which is a little bit heavy. But um, already, yeah, it's it's reacting much better. 
I'm flying in acro and, and air mode. That's always the way I do. And it's, you know, a lot floatier because I can take the throttle off. But it's still heavy. You can feel it, you know, dropping relatively fast. It's not it's not what you'd call a floaty quad. It is nice and uh, fast, though, it, it seems. I've po poked that camera up a little bit more. And this is letting me get the power down in a straight line. And because it's heavy, there's there's not much danger of it, you know, gaining altitude instead of pushing that speed forward. It does that okay. The rate seemed fairly good. It can flip and roll really nice and quickly. It's reasonably agile, if just a little bit slow to respond. I'm trying to figure out if I'm really feeling the difference or if this is just because I know it's PPM now, but it does seem different. I, I have to say, I didn't notice the difference when I first went from PPM to SBUS, but now when you come back, it's quite different. The other thing I did in the beta flight settings, which I forgot to mention, is sort out the voltage alarm. Now, on this sort of quad, I actually set the warning voltage to 3.3, which is probably as low as you want to go. But what will happen inevitably is that you will dip into that and recover. So what I want is a fair whack of, you know, being able to do some stuff without the beeps going. And then when you actually get a beep, um, normally, you know, it's it's time to come in. Nice fly around, good little flight. But I kind of felt when I put the power down and wanted to rapidly ascend, that wasn't really happening. So what I did is grabbed a smaller battery and did a quick test line of sight just to make sure it looked okay. So you see it gets up there but it kind of takes a little while to get going. That's not bad. This is a Frias 800 milliamp hour. It's not particularly high C but I wanted to see how it would do. This seems interesting. Hmm, that feels very different. Worthy to FPV, I think. So here's the FPV on a free S, and as you probably saw from the line of sight, there were some oscillations on the motors when we went full throttle on those climb outs. And this is reflected again in this picture here. You can see we've got, it's a bit bumpy as uh, we spin those props up higher, and we've got more noise. Obviously there's more dirty power coming through and getting into this camera or VTX. Now unfortunately I, I don't carry a laptop around from, with me for uh, tuning, and this didn't have an OSD so I couldn't do anything on the day but it just looks like I need to do something with the PIDs to try and mitigate this higher voltage. 3S was definitely interesting it did have a lot more power there and it really wanted to go um, it, it seems to be really quite nice at doing you know your fast straight line speed it gets that quite well it still has an issue with a climb out and when you dive down, of course, because it's heavier, you've, you've got to bear that in mind when you come to recover, whereas your normal micro quad, you can stop a couple of inches from the ground and go again. This one has a little bit more inertia it carries around with that weight, but it's still vastly better than flying it on 2S. My only worry flying it, and perhaps it's because I could hear the oscillations and obviously see them in the screen and get that noise, I kind of felt like it might explode any minute. <laughs> I'm sure if it was smoother I'd feel a little bit more confident with it but it felt a little bit ooh you know is this going to be okay as it was I actually flew two of these 800 milliamp hour free cells and between each flight well I say between each flight after each flight I checked the motors for heat and I checked the ESCs and it actually felt fine that a little warm but de definitely not hot definitely didn't seem to be a problem I got the idea of flying free S from one of the comments from the last video who said uh, it was all fine on stock although it did melt the uh, JST adapter <laughs> on the quad which is, is hardly a ringing endorsement but it just goes to show that there is a limitation on the number of amps a JST can pull compared to something like an XD30. 
But despite all this, um, nothing melted, nothing blew up, and it seemed to go pretty well. So I have to say, it's it's a wild ride, but one I kind of enjoyed. That was more interesting than last time, most certainly. Um, on this big battery, it still feels too heavy. I mean, the whole thing is definitely more heavy than your normal micro. Um, and having this great big 850 pack on there really doesn't help things too much. So it's good for flying around fast in straight lines and that, but when you want to do sort of rapid um, climbs and stuff, this big battery is not so good. Put sort of the 550 2S in there and it's pretty good. Move the 3S however, and things get really interesting as you saw. Now, I'm not sure if I can fully endorse using it. I'm not sure if it's properly supported or not. I literally felt like it was about to explode <laughs> every stick movement. It just felt like it was running away. Um, th there was some noise and there was some um, PID issues on that one. I think I'd have to retune and do something um, a little bit different. I, you know, I don't like this camera. It's not very good. It, it does the job, but it was certainly suffering from some, some noise when we went on that 3S. But I had to say 3S was quite a lot of fun as well. It still wasn't ballistic going upwards, but geez, it was just crazy flying it around. It was certainly a lot more fun than it came out of the box. So, you know, I still say you can't really argue for the price getting a radio um, and this little quad and the fact you can then put some more into it and, and do some different things is a pretty good deal, I think. Um, so I'll have to try and come back if I can to do a bit more with it. So I'd really like to change that camera out, but we'll see. But, you know, I think it's a fun thing to have. I'll, I'll have to have it around and if somebody wants to try flying, then I, they can pick this up easily and, and see how it goes. So I'll wrap this up here and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.